getting ready to put the intake on. Got some good Felpro gaskets. In the kit you get these cork seals for the end. You just want to take those and throw them at the neighbour's cat or something because they come loose and leak and better off just using slastic. So just use a bit of black engine slastic across the ends. And what I do then, put some light centre pops across where it goes, both ends, on the block as well. Just some light centre pops and that helps the slastic to stick. Uh, I've got a pair of guide studs on one side only because if you put them both sides it wouldn't go down obviously. Um, put the, I put a little bit of uh, raspberry jam around the water ports as well because like it's real bad if they leak and it runs into the oil through the bottom of there so a little bit of sealer for some extra insurance. I'll just run a bit of slastic across here it's got to be about between three and four mil thick so put it on a fair bit thicker when it squashes down just wipe the excess off so it's good to use the black stuff because you can't see it if you use some other color it makes a mess started tighten it down evenly in an X shape pattern I had the intake manifold on I was getting close to the last tension and I realized that one of the bolts wasn't tightening up I didn't notice it when it was coming apart or maybe it was just weak and as I went to tighten it it stripped but I've had to take the intake manifold back off clean all the slastic off and now I'm in the process of putting a heli coil in, so hopefully it'll be a lot stronger and it'll tension up well. Then I have to go and put it all back on again. Intake manifold's back on. Uh, don't forget to put sealer. Some of the bolts, not all of them, but some of the bolts go through into the oil. So don't forget to put sealer on the threads. I've tensioned it down, 25 foot-pounds, and... When you, when you do it, just take them all down a little bit at a time, starting from the centre, just go backwards and forwards across, then diagonally across, backwards and forwards across, up there, down there, up there. Keep going just a tiny little bit at a time until it all comes down and settles because you don't want to twist it or make it pull one side tighter than the other so just take it down very gradually and when you think you're near the tension then start going over it with the torque wrench and sneak up to it so that it comes down nice and flat then when that's all done get a rag wipe the excess elastic off the outside of there so that it looks nice and neat and that's why it's good to use black and check down the hole where the distributor goes to make sure there isn't any big pieces hanging out on the inside that's going to foul on your distributor when it goes in, just in case you put a bit too much on. I've done the front as well. It's come up nice and tidy as well. So that's all looking good. I'm happy with that. Intake manifold is on. I don't really like it that much. It's a bit open, but I'd like to have a tunnel ram style one on there, but this is all we've got for now. Might upgrade that in the future. Uh, new gasket on and drop the intercooler on then distributor in then blower on the top I've got the intercooler sitting in place with two new gaskets now I'm about to set it up for the distributor timing I'm running a MSD timing retarder so I need to allow 8 degrees of timing 
so that it puts me in the mid-range of the timing retard so that I get adjustment either way. And I want a base timing setting around about 8 degrees for now. So half of the MSD retard plus 8 degrees puts me at about 16 degrees. So I've just turned the engine to place the crankshaft on 16 degrees. Always turn it past and then bring it back in the, rota in the direction of rotation of the engine up to that timing mark to take up any slack in the chain. So now I can get the distributor ready to put in if the timing's right. We've got an MSD electronic distributor. This is the oil gallery section that I was talking about earlier where that seals into the block and this groove forms part of the oil gallery. There's also a little tiny hole lubricates the bottom of the distributor. Uh, a little bit of grease on this gear because on initial startup we don't want it to run dry and it doesn't just dist drive the distributor, it also drives the oil pump through the bottom of there and we need to find number one on the cap or where, wherever you want number one to be you can actually move it around or alter it as long as you know where you're starting from so for me I've got the number one lead here and I've marked that so when I drop the distributor in that's where I want it to line up to pull the cap off so it's easier to manage and my number one mark is on the back of here so I want my rotor button pointer to line up with that mark when it's in because it's on a helical gear it'll turn as it goes in sometimes it goes in sometimes it doesn't because it has to line up with the oil pump drive at the bottom which is a flat blade so it could be out a bit so you might have to pull it out turn it with a screwdriver and put it back in that's gone into the oil pump straight away and my mark is there rotor button lines up there the next thing is to line up the magnet pickup or the pulse generator I should say I have the distributor lined up rotor button lined up with the number one mark where I want my number one lead to leave from you can see it in the reflection on the back here lined up with the rotor button but I can't see the contacts very well so I'm just going to lift the rotor button off so that I can see the trigger as it goes past the magnetic pickup. So first of all, need to turn it clockwise a little bit so that it goes past the trigger. Then we turn it anti-clockwise against rotation. Normal rotation is clockwise. So we're going against rotation until they line up exactly. And the timing will be right there. So then I'll just lock it up. And I'll put the rotor button back on, put the distributor cap on, and the timing's right because the crankshaft is in the right spot. Clean up the plug leads, put the distributor cap on, and I've just checked the gasket for the top of the intercooler, and the, gas the holes in the gasket were too small, even compared to the bottom of the blower. So I've just trimmed them out because I don't want the extra cardboard hanging in there. This is the bottom of the blower. It's not in bad condition. Should be good. It's all nice and clean. Ready to drop that on. Just need a bit of hired help because it's a little bit heavy and awkward. So I've got my mate Russ to come and give me a hand. Right, this is a Mooneyham 871. I've got my mate Russ here to give me a hand because it's a bit awkward to do by yourself. I'll lift that on very carefully. Hopefully the engine stand won't collapse under the weight. Sweet. And again, when we're clamping this down, do it in a crisscross pattern and very gentle on the tension so that it goes down nice and evenly so it doesn't twist. I put a couple of carby kits through these carbs, 1150 Holly Dominators. 
and I've changed around the throttle linkages a bit to get them to work better. A couple of new springs. It's all going quite nicely now. Got them synchronised together and adjusted so they work together well. Got all the fuel lines on. And got the regulator there. Ready for the fuel hookup. Uh, Tappet cover vents going up to the catch can. A couple of hoses on there. Coils on. And I've dropped it down onto an engine stand that'll be good for transporting it. Um, heavy duty flex plate, we've bolted that on and that's the drive that hooks up to the shaft that goes to the jet. At the front we've got the belt on, tensioned up. We've got a cover that goes over the front and these, these are the mounts for the cover. But I'm not going to put that on till it's in the boat. Also, I've got the alternator to go on, but it mounts off the front engine mount. So I'll just leave that until it's in the boat. So now it's time to get it into the trailer and transport it down to the boat, drop it in.